and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in September 24. Yet another month full of awesome games. It feels like in AAA there are some months where very few great games come out, but in the indie world there are awesome games coming out every single day. This month has everything from some hardcore stylish action to some cozy chill vibes, there's complex management games and just silly fun. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Do you know how much is a Steam deal deal worth, and what exactly do you need to get one? Or have you heard about these awesome futuristic AR glasses? Or here's three tips from a massively successful game for you to learn from? Or here's some nice interesting videos that I saw. I covered all of this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. It's where I cover the news and any interesting Game Dev articles that I come across every week. Check it out with the link in the description and sign up for free. Also a fun update from myself, yesterday I completed my very first proper marathon. It was definitely super difficult, my legs are still in pain right now, but I loved achieving such a difficult goal. I ended up making it in 4 hours and 31 minutes, which was actually better than I expected. So I hope you have also made progress towards achieving your own goals, both game dev goals and outside of game dev. Alright, so starting off at number 10, here's one that I've been watching on YouTube, watching the devlogs for the past few years, it's Chef RPG. It started development 4 years ago and was making progress very consistently. The devlogs are great and the game concept is also great, so I'm not surprised to see this is a huge hit. It is very much in the vein of something like Stardew Valley. You want to become the best chef in the world, so you go out on this world, gather plants, hunt animals and even some giant enemy crabs. Then go back home and build your restaurant while you do all kinds of fun minigames to prepare every kind of food for your customers. Then you upgrade, get some more space to do some more farming, buy machines to do things like fermentation. You can also explore this gorgeous town, meet all the other villagers and impress the food critics. Your restaurant will grow little by little from a tiny house to a giant place serving hundreds of people every day. The game has been in development for so long, so it's already a pretty massive game. It's got tons of systems, quests, characters, and a giant world to explore. Despite that, it's really only in early access. It is out now and already has 800 very positive reviews. So if you like Stardew Valley-like games, then this looks like an excellent new entry that you definitely should try. Up next, here we have one of the biggest hits this month, the TCG Card Shop Simulator. This is one of those where as soon as I see it, I think to myself, well, of course, this idea would be a huge hit, but naturally that's the kind of thing that's only obvious in hindsight. I've mentioned previously on how I really want to try making one of these simulator games in the future, and the more I see games like this, the more I really want to try it. In this one, you run a trading card shop. So you build up your shop with racks to display your trading cards and all your packs, while also leaving some space for tables for people to just play and have fun. You can choose what cards you want to buy, how much to stock and how much to sell them for. You can also try opening your own booster packs, and perhaps you might get lucky and get a rare card. Then you can decide either to sell that rare card or keep it in your own private collection. The game also has a market system where prices for cards can fluctuate up and down. As you make more money, you can expand your store, you can unlock new card sets, attract more and more people to make the most popular and most profitable card game store. And somehow, another common thing in these games is always smelly people. So some people apparently can smell really bad and it's up to you as a store owner to throw some deodorant on them. This really is one of the biggest hits of this month. It already has over 5,000 reviews at overwhelmingly positive, meaning this one has likely already generated over $3 million in gross revenue. Definitely an awesome, insane hit. Then here we have a really cool looking game called Rune Coliseum. It's a deck building roguelike with a very unique semi real time combat system. You play as a gladiator in this very brutal game, select your character from a huge pool of unique heroes, each with their unique skills, pick your favorite weapon, equipment and runes, then enter into battle, which has a really interesting system. You play skills or cards in an action bar, which then plays automatically. So you queue up the right set of actions to both attack and defend, if you do it right, you get some extremely satisfying combos. The goal is to fight your way from battle to battle. If you die, it's game over. Restart and try again with a different build. The game is really oozing with style. I really love how this one looks. It's got some nice thick black outlines, kind of like Darkest Dungeon, but also mixed with some super stylish melee action. This looks super fun to play or really just watch these battles. The game is out now in early access. They've also got a detailed roadmap of at least one year, so already planning quite a bit. So far, the game is being very well received with over three 
300 very positive reviews. Next here's one that looks a bit strange, but people are loving it. It's Fantasy Map Simulator. This is definitely not the kind of game that I would expect would find success. It looks super niche. Here you can simulate fantasy maps. You can create them from scratch and watch as they evolve over centuries. You design all the areas, define all the nations, then watch as they attack one another, declare war or become allies, invade or defend. You can customize literally anything about the map, but you also don't have to design every inch of the world. You design the map and then it gets auto-populated with as many nations as you want. You can just let it all happen automatically, or you can slightly nudge the nations in a particular direction. One awesome gimmick of this game is how it can run as a wallpaper on your desktop, so you can go about your day and every once in a while just see some nations fighting in your desktop. You can also view the history of the world to see exactly what happened. Like I said, this is very strange, but I love it when people make such ingenious unique ideas. I've certainly never seen anything like this one. It is out now in early access and already has over a thousand very positive reviews. So despite looking like such a niche idea, it is actually finding a ton of success. Next for another very unique game, a very unique RTS, here is Toy Tactics. You command five armies, each with different units. And the unique twist is how you draw your formations line by line and use the right tools, the right units for the job. You pick a unit type, then literally draw with your mouse or your tablet. For example, keep your archers behind your melee units and send out your heroes in advance. You can design famous formations from history, like the phalanx, the wedge, or you can go silly and draw something funny. Once drawn, the units will keep that formation, so you draw it once and then you can move them and they will keep that formation. You can go head to head or be sneaky and hide in the bushes or capture the high ground. Try to defeat the challenging campaign, or go into sandbox mode and make up your own scenarios, or engage in challenges where you need to be clever with your formations in order to defeat a larger force. You can play in either co-op or in PvP. Personally, I love the look of this game, very nice stylized characters, and I also love the uniqueness of the game mechanics. I'm definitely curious to try out those challenge modes. One of my favorite movies is 300, so I definitely love the concept of a small army defeating a very large army just by being clever with their tactics. The game is out now with 70 very positive reviews. Then if you want to have fun on an island along with some critters, here is Critter Cove. This is a relaxing, cozy town building game, but it first starts off very dark and moody, so it's your job to get it back to its former glory. Clean up some trash, gather some plants and fish, get to farming and grow some crops, explore this island to find all kinds of unique treasures, and as you improve the island, more residents will come in to live here. Build new homes, build stores, and even some factories to help you craft more advanced items and machines. If you do a good job, you can take this rundown island and turn it into a paradise. Despite not having necessarily a very neat hook, this one is actually already finding quite a lot of success. It looks like it was driven mainly by having an excellent demo that they put out several months ago. It is out now in early access and already has over 600 overwhelmingly positive views, so people definitely love this. Next, if you're just looking for a bit of silly fun, here is What the Car. It is from the same developers that made What the Golf and What the Bat. This one is very much in the same vein. It's a very, very silly game. This time, it's all about a car. But of course, the car isn't really a normal car. The game is a collection of unique, absurd levels, and the car never really drives like a normal car. In one level, it has a bunch of legs. On the next one, you're chopping some vegetables. Then you're flying with rockets before moving on to some giant stilts. The goal is to quickly learn the mechanics of each different level and get to the finish line. If you're just looking for a fun good time, then this is definitely the perfect game. It is out now with 250 very positive reviews. Next for some turn-based ninja action, here is Shogun Showdown. Guide your character through this adventure full of tough combat encounters where you need to be careful with positioning in order to survive. There's only a handful of spots where you and the enemies can stand, so positioning really is key. Build up and unleash your attacks all at the right time, make the right call in the overworld and try to reach the end. The game is a roguelike, so every time you die you unlock more characters, you get better gear and skills to make it further on the next run. The game features some gorgeous pixel art, everything looks really nice, the characters, the background and even the skills, everything looks great. This one has just graduated from early access and had a very successful time there. It has gathered over 3000 overwhelmingly positive views at 95% positive, so you feel like roguelikes with important positioning, then definitely give this one a try. Then if you want some sci-fi deck building spaceship fights, look at Breachway. Here you pick your spaceship, equip your weapons, set up your deck and go out into the universe in a randomly generated map. Find others out in the universe and talk to them or buy some equipment. 
but raise your shields and get ready for some combat. Cards have costs, so you need to balance your resources and use the right cards at the right time. Use your cards to shoot lasers and aim directly exactly where you want to hit. So will you first hit their shields or disable their weapons? The choice is really yours. If at first you don't succeed, keep trying and try again. With better knowledge and better tools, you will hopefully one day succeed. The game is out now in early access. Reviews are at mostly positive and seems like the negatives are some hopefully temporary technical issues. It also needs some balancing and some polish, but the core seems solid, so maybe wait until it hits 1.0. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have a super stylish game that is a huge hit, it's I Am Your Beast. It's a super fast-paced shooting game, all about taking the right action at the right time while using all of your abilities. This is definitely a game that requires quite a bit of improvisation. The game is not about pixel-perfect accuracy, it is really all about style. Sneak up to an enemy and kick them down a well, then grab his knife and throw it against another target, then pick up your pistol and start popping some headshots. The weapons, they all have very limited ammo, so you have to stay nimble. Climb up some trees, reuse knives, pick up ammos or grab the weapons of your enemies and just keep going. Visually, the game is absolutely excellent. It reminds me of the game 13 that I loved playing as a kid. It's got an excellent comic book style visuals. This one is also from the same developers of El Paso Elsewhere. That's another super stylish action game that came out last year. So honestly, I have no idea how these devs managed to produce such awesome games so quickly. This one, I Am Your Beast, is already a huge hit, over 1000 reviews at overwhelmingly positive. So if you enjoy stylish, fast-paced action, definitely give this one a try. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launch in September 24. I hope this list helps you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Guardians, and I hope you enjoy playing it.